Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm gonna be assembling another Liberty. This time it's gonna be a V-tail, so I'm just gonna go over the fuselage assembly. I'm not gonna do the wing because I've already done several videos on that. But here is the uh, nose pod. This is for a Liberty kind of medium light model. I asked for a kind of specific layup. And this pod is new in that it has a shorter nose. So the nose is, I don't know, probably a hundred millimeters or so shorter, maybe a little less, 80 millimeters or something. And that's gonna help with CG. So that's a great improvement there. And here's what the back of the V-tail looks like. Really high quality. Great detail in the the carbon work there. So yeah. Now, um, I'm gonna use an alternate method. If you've seen my other Liberty Build videos, you know that this tray goes in the fuselage here. But there's another tray included with the kits. And that goes in this cutout here, in the nose pod, like that. And now we can mount our servos kind of flat under the wing. And that's going to give us all this room here for motor speed control battery and we'll be able to really shift that battery around and possibly run a bigger battery if we have to. So I'm super excited about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of get my head wrapped around this tray and see how it all goes together. Kind of figuring this out, um, on this tray there's, there's definitely a bigger side and a smaller side so keep that in mind. The bigger side goes towards the front. Um, and then on the pod here I've used a gold sharpie and just marked the center lines of the push rods as they come out here and that that helps me align the horns or the arms on the servos with the center line of the push rods and what I figured out I had to do was put some notches in this little servo tray to help clear that servo arm and see it there because I had to move the servo back for the arms to um, line up with the push rods. But other than that, everything's pretty good. I did scuff up the sides and a little bit on the tops here, and I put some little notches in there. And I've sanded the fuse where the 3D printed tray mates to it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this in here and just try to line everything up and temporarily install the servos. And I'm going to use a little bit of super glue to just tack this in place um, so that I can remove the servos without this moving around and then use epoxy to glue it in permanently. Okay, I've just put a few drops of super glue in a few spots just to hold this in. Before I did that, I took this straight edge and put it at the lowest spot on the fuselage, which is right down the center line, and I just moved it around to make sure that no, no part of the servo was protruding past the top of the fuselage. That's really important so you don't damage um, your wing when you mount your wing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unscrew these servos, and we're going to go ahead and get some epoxy going and permanently mount this tray. So ready to epoxy the tray in, um, got it tacked in with the super glue, and then I kind of went back with the Dremel tool and just ground out a little bit of the CA instead of having like big blobs. I ground it back down to the carbon and the plastic. And while I'm mixing epoxy, I'm also going to go ahead and mix the epoxy for the motor mount for this X-Power. This is a 29258 windy motor. And here is the uh, Ryzen Hour motor mount for that. This is a plastic motor mount. And I've actually um, sort of tapered the ends to help me get it into the fuselage. So I just sanded a little bit there all the way around. And I've sanded the outside 
mounting surface and put some notches in it with the Dremels you can see there and then I'm gonna I scuffed up the inside of the fuse and I'm gonna put a little bit of epoxy on the inside and then push the motor mount in but we'll start with just getting um, epoxy on the servo tray so I've already mixed up some really good slow cure epoxy and I'm just gonna go and put some in where I need it And if I get a little too much on somewhere, um, I can always go back and grind it out if the servo interferes or anything like that. Okay, I think that's looking good. So now we can move on to the nose. And I'm actually going to use the popsicle stick that I mixed the epoxy up with. And this is quite a tight fit, so I don't need a whole lot here. And if you put a lot on and you push this, this motor mount in, and you might squeeze the epoxy out the back side and it could interfere with getting the motor in so don't need a whole lot but just try to spread it around evenly Okay, and uh, I could have put some tape around here to protect this, but I think what I'll do is just get this in and then um, I will wipe off the excess with some rubbing alcohol. It's quite a tight fit. Tapering the... Um, and it's going to help me out with this. Okay. 
and just make sure it's fully seated. Fits quite nice. So just make sure it's fully seated and then just get a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol on it. And we'll just wipe down any that happen to ooze out. And there you go, that's it. So we'll wait for this to dry overnight. Then we can get our servos in and start hooking up the push rods. So I'm getting ready to glue the little bits of push rods into these couplers that are attached to the clevis and the servo. And I've prepared the servo arm, so I used the single sided servo arms that came with these X08s or AO8s. And I'm using the hole that's one end from the end, so I cut off one hole at the tip of the servo arm. And the way I came up with the uh, the lengths on these these guys was that I put the tails on, and they're taped up in the center position. And I pushed the servos in place and just drew a line parallel with the output shaft center line. And I used that to um, mark the push rods, and the push rods are hooked up here at these couplers. I used that to put a mark on the push rods. And then I was able to cut these pieces down to size so. Actually, this was a little bit longer, and then I just put the um, push rod, or the, the clevis with the coupler on it, and marked that up, lined that up with the first line, and then was able to draw a second line to cut this down. And these are um, scuffed up, and they have some notches cut in them, so ready to go, basically. And I also ground... little slots in the ends of the couplers. Using the same epoxy, we're gonna go ahead and um, get all this in place. Okay, so epoxy is curing. I've slipped in those um, short lengths of carbon into the brass couplers with the clevises. That's where the epoxy is and they're hooked up here at the boom connections and servos are slight, there's kind of lightly screwed in place so we'll just let that cure and once that's cure I'll just power on the servos I did program the centering and make sure that made sure the arms are pointing 90 degrees straight down before I installed these but we'll power them up and make sure we're close with the surfaces with the tails and our travels are okay and once everything's okay I'll, I'll permanently screw these down and that'll wrap up the tail then we'll need to install the wiring harness here and obviously get the motor in so speed control um, gonna have to make some extensions I think for these A08 servos right because the receiver is going to sit somewhere in here but you need enough cable length to be able to plug them into the receiver and then shove the receiver back so we'll make up some extensions there that'll basically wrap up the fuselage build the servo installation is done so we have our servos in they're screwed down tightly and you can see here the ends of the push rod lengths with the uh, clamps and it's a 1.5 millimeter Allen to tighten those up so you'd slide the boom on and carefully guide the ends of the push rod into those clamping sections then tighten them make sure they're fully seated um, I have the wire 
kind of route the wires, the servo wires routed through the middle here and down. And I have, uh, I've made up two extensions because the servo ends kind of end up here. So I've made up two extensions to extend the leads so that they can be connected to the, to a receiver. And then we have the, um, pre-made harness for the wing here that's in place right here and I need to screw this in but the kit didn't come with screws so I need to find little some kind of little flathead screws to go in there and then I've also um, went ahead and installed the motor and I have speed control in here too so that basically wraps up the installation of the servos on the new uh, new position here under the wing instead of in the pod. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up and I'm going to get the model on the bench and see where our CG ends up. Alright, I got the Liberty on the CG machine. And just to recap, we have the new short nose. Servos are here. I have a Futaba receiver here, 3S, 800 milliamp battery, Talon 60, X Power uh, Windy motor, CCM spinner, CCM prop set, model is assembled on the bench, and CG is 113, which is like right in the ballpark without adjusting anything, and the weight is 1340 grams or about 47 ounces so this model is like in between a light and a medium which I think for this is absolutely perfect and there is actually room to move the battery forward a little bit or even go with a slightly bigger capacity battery to move the CG uh, slightly forward if you wanted to so this is like perfect the new short nose is definitely the way to go with this and put the servos under there. You'll have no CG problems whatsoever. So there you go, that was a quick video on how to assemble the new uh, short nose uh, V-tail or the regular length nose V-tail fuse and putting the servos under the wing. All right guys, I will see you in the next one.